What's happening all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And oh my goodness, I have a table full of books. This is my haul for December of 2022. Better late than never. So let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back everybody. So before getting started, I, I do want to say a huge thank you to Super Laugh Hard. Uh, for gathering books for the last year and a half or so and sending me a bunch of books from across the seas. So we have some Rebellion 2000 AD books in here. Uh, we have some Titan books in here. But these are books that he thought, you know, I may or may not have. And he was so kind. And he's the one that did the custom Judge Dread books and reading order. Those were amazing. So... Thank you so much, Bia. Before even getting started, there's a lot to cover here today. Some of these books I've already done overviews of, and if you want to check those out, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you check out the different playlists that we have. Uh, but before I go any further, please don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. It's a very small thing you can do, but it means the world to us here. So... Yeah, let's go ahead and start. We have a lot of these 2000 AD collections, so we'll start with those Ultimate Collections, talk a little bit about what they are, and I'll show what the spines look like together of uh, the ones that he sent. And probably just doing a couple of them, though, because there is a lot of books to cover here. So, let's go ahead and start with those. So this is the very first or the earliest volume, I'm sorry, that I was sent of the 2000 AD Ultimate Collection. Every single one of these is a hardcover and no dust jacket. Some of them are color, some of them are in black and white. Uh, there are introductions for all these stories. And I'm not sure when these were originally printed, and I mean the, the hardcovers. This is a Strodium Dog. And uh, Carlos Esqueda is the artist on this, who of course co-created the... Judge, not as my little girl likes to call him, or not, not as the judge that she thinks of, Judge Judy, but Judge Dredd. So this is the other character that he helped co-create. And I assume these are the earliest adventures, uh, of course from 2000 AD magazine. I'm not sure if these are released in chronological order, or what kind of order they're released in. I assume they're kind of like epic collections here in America. Where you have a volume four and then you get like um here for example you get a volume 61 and i believe please 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 anybody overseas correct me if i'm wrong these are all done through subscription base like you get a subscription it's a monthly book that you get it is a very cool concept um this one here is kingdom volume two so it is volume two of that series dan abnett richard uh belson elson sorry and I'm sure you're going to recognize a lot of the names that I'm going to go through here. I'm not going to go through each one of these books, as I promised, because we have a lot to cover. But this is the type of artwork that's in here. And as I mentioned, each one of them comes with an introduction, or at least the ones that I've looked at. And here's a little bit of that artwork. And this is a series I've, I didn't even know about. Um, articles all the way in the back and extras in the back. And some original covers there i believe with the characters and 2000 ad graphic novels including halo jones gotta do an overview of that one but th these are really cool and like i said i think they're all subscription based let's look at a couple more this is the 10 seconders the american dream rob williams mark harrison edmund bagwell dom reardon and ben oliver are the creators behind this and this is volume 93, so I mean, we're still getting introductions here. Very cool, and this is what the art style um, that you're going to be seeing in here looks like. Now, the thing that we don't see, or at least I don't anywhere, is the rating on these. Well, like in America, they all come sealed, by the way. They all come in a plastic uh, sealed. Plastic sealed, what the heck? <laughs> plastically sealed that's what happens when you don't get enough sleep the night before uh, but my point is i don't know what the rating on these are because it wasn't anywhere on the outside of the plastic like on a sticker or anything but and there's nowhere in the back 
and I'm not saying that they're all mature content. It looks like the Joker there. But, I mean, some of them could be considered maybe Team Plus. Not sure because of the violence and some of the uh, content that's in here. So, it is interesting that we do have a different rating system here in America. You know, we're like DC and Marvel. And, of course, Image and Dark Horse have done it too. Here, let's look at a couple more. Because these are fun to look at. Um... We put like a rating system like, oh, this is definitely Team Plus or this is definitely Mature Rating because of all the violence. There's a couple of Slain books in here. And I was introduced to... Whoa. Okay. Um, that, that's definitely art. I thought she was... Okay. That was... Uh, that got my attention. There's an introduction. Welcome back to the Slain Epic Books by Matt Smith. These are gorgeous. I have a couple of these that... Um, I ended up getting because some of y'all kept telling me to check out Slain and saying, you know, if you like Conan, you got to check out Slain, Omar. And I did, and I love the artwork. I just never got around to actually uh, finish. I think I've read one of them, and it was it was one that came out just a few years ago, so it wasn't the earliest adventures. And I assume these are done. Hey, there she is. These are done in chronological order, like the books. It's really killer artwork. It's that, you know, photorealistic artwork. So there's a lot of Photoshop going on in here. But it kind of works for this type of story, the fantasy story. Uh, let's see. So this is something I just noticed that you have Slain Volume 5, Volume 6, Volume 7, and Slain Books of Invasions, Volume 1 and Volume 2. But what's cool is that they're all, like, released like this, 34, 35, 36... So I don't know if they're keeping all the slains in one block. Please, if you know more about these, let me know. Because it's the first time I'm looking at any of these. And I just found the rest. So it's like slain book one, two, three, four. And actually, no, the horned god is between, huh, three and four. This is the one that I read, the thorn god. Because um, I got it from Rebellion 2000 AD. I thought this artwork was killer because it's Simon Beasley. Pat Mills is the writer on this. Yeah, this is the only one that I've read out of all of them. And it does remind me a lot of Conan, but like heavy metal Frank Frazetta type of stories. Lots of violence. That's what I remember from those. So this is really cool, man. Here, let's look at Nemesis the Warlock Volume 1, which is a character I'm not really familiar with. I know that he appears throughout 2000 AD, and he's a very popular character because he was in the best of 2000 AD uh, comics. Or the uh, volume one. This is uh, written by Pat Mills. And all of this, I believe, is in black and white as far as volume one. But again, this is really interesting because, okay, so this is volume 19 of these Ultimate Collections. 20 and 21 are right here. And they all have Nemesis the Warlock volume two and three. So maybe they are separating the characters by chunks. Now, I want to show you all what these look like together, or what they would look like, to kind of get an idea of what these would look like together on a shelf. So, let's do it like this. So you can see what the connecting spines look like together. Of course, there's a lot of missing volumes. It goes all the way to 121. Oh my gosh, to get all these would be one heck of a feat. But they are beautifully put together books. I kind of wish we would have something like this here in America. I've seen the the Transformers and Deadpool collections that people have overseas, and they're beautiful. But I love the idea of connecting spines, because, I mean, spines is usually what you see on bookshelves. And this, my goodness, this this is absolutely awesome. Super, super laugh hard. My dude, what have you done? Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's keep going back to the overview. I just wanted you all to see this image like I do here from this perspective. And just showcasing a couple of more. This, for example, is volume 64, and this one is 65. This is the Grievous Journey of Ichabod Azrael and the Dead Left in His Wake. That is an awesome title, Rob Williams. Uh, and this is Stickleback. Got a little Nickelback vibes here. I just wanted to see what this artwork looks like. So this is in black and white. Let's see. And there's an introduction there. Matt Smith. I believe that's the editor, Matt Smith. Not to be confused with the Doctor, Matt Smith. Or now in House of the Dragon. Or in the Morbius movie. Oh, this one looks really cool. A little bit of color in there. Okay, and then there's a lot of color. Huh. 
So let's uh actually let's move on to other books here. Then we have Judge Dread Heavy Metal Dread. Experiencing Judge Dread like you've never seen him before. That's Simon Beasley doing the first book. Let's see. John Wagner, Alan Grant, John Smith. Yeah, it is Simon Beasley. It's got such an awesome art style. I'll always remember his art from the Lobo miniseries. Love his art. Uh, this, of course, is not him, but this is the kooky type of stories you're going to find in here. Man, Judge Dredd has this whole world about him that I know very little about just from reading the case files. And this is really missing me, uh, making me miss going. This is uh, Judge Dredd, the Cursed. Oh, this is the Cursed Earth. I have read this. Uh, it's making me miss read Judge Dredd. Oh my gosh. I had so much fun reading those case files and then picking my favorite story and talking to you all about them. And yeah, back in, I was going to do a video like back in August, I think. And then the YouTube algorithm just blew up and not in a good way. It was like, you got to start making shorts. You got to start making videos that get people's attention. I was doing two to three videos a day and it just became, uh, you know, it, it was bad for my, uh, I, I wasn't sleeping. It was just trying to figure out the new algorithm. And I honestly still haven't. <laughs> You've probably seen that from the lack of shorts that I've done on my channel. And I put a stop to that to, because, oh, and the other thing that happened where books were coming back to print in October, the, like we were missing some books from Marvel and DC in the summer. Like Omnis weren't coming out because they were getting delayed. So they started coming back out around late. Yeah, it was late September and October. So the idea of doing the Judge Dredd Part 3, which I really want to go back and do. If you haven't seen those, please check out those videos. That would mean a lot to me because I love talking about this stuff. The idea of doing Part 3 of that just kind of got put on the side. And it sucks because it's videos that I like doing but just, just didn't perform that well. And, you know, but I've come to just terms that it's not about that too. I mean, that's why I brought the... I mean, if, if my channel was just based on videos that perform well, it would just be breaking news all the time and top 10 list all the time. That's it. <laughs> like, and I, you know, as much as I like doing those, it just feels like less of myself that I put in. Well, no, the top 10 are my list though. Uh, these talking about stories and stuff is what I enjoy doing. I'm sorry to the people that don't enjoy hearing about them, but just who I am. All right. This is really cool. This is a, collection of the curse at earth with which i've read through the case files but it's all in one in here and it's all in black and white or i mean it's all in hardcover that's really cool this is really interesting because i'm not used to seeing judge dread with a dust jacket but this is judge dread i'm not sure what this is the day the law died classic stories classic edition so in this they're not using glossy paper they're using actual thick matte paper i could tell that was brian boland right away so it looks like they're just picking stories from judge dread in oversized format and most of these i think are from the black and white days because at one point in the case files they do start printing them in color and i think that's so cool like the progression of that now if you're interested in purchasing some of these books check out our sponsor if you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! Now we're taking a break from all those UK books to showcase this. Uh, this is Sleeper, Omnibus Volume 1. And I've, there's only one Omnibus, by the way. I don't know why I said Omnibus Volume 1. But I did do an overview of this book, if you want to check it out on the channel. I, I compared it to the original printing, and this is the latest printing. Got a couple more of these big books. I'll just kind of fly through them. This is Cromwell Stone. And this one is published by two, uh, Titan black and white story but it is a superb horror story compelling beyond belief Those are some nice words who wow the artwork is nice uh, who is let me look and see who the creators of uh, this book are written and illustrated by andreas 
man, this artwork is gorgeous. Goodness gracious. I, yeah, I just can't get over the amount of just line work that is in this. Wow. And this is all done in black and whoa, black and white. Very beautiful. Holy crap. Just the architecture right there. Um, that is very pleasing to the eyes. Contrast in black and white is nice. Hmm. This, is, this uh, Cromwell Stone is in a hardcover collection. Now, got a couple of magazines here, or magazine type of graphic novels here. This is Dead Man, John Wagner and John Ridgway. John Wagner, man, that guy was just writing everything. And, and if you're not familiar with that name because of Judge Strad, um, he also did an American, what was it, the History of American Violence? Or History, History of American Violence? <laughs> a History of Violence, that's what it's called. And I'm pretty sure if you're not familiar with the name of the graphic novel, you're probably familiar with the movie. This is Twisted Time, Shocking Futures. I like these titles. And this is Dr. Quinch. Oh, I remember these characters. Dr. Quinch is totally awesome guide to life. This is Alan Moore and Alan Davis. I don't think there's been a collection of this stuff outside of like, uh, the thing that I read in the best of 2000 AD, I don't... Th well, at least I know here in America. Because when you think of the name Alan Moore, you immediately think everything by him has been collected. But there's a lot of work he did overseas. And including Dr... Did Dr. and Quinch? Is that what it is? DR? I'm sorry, DR and Quinch. So I used to call him Dr. Uh, the, the only thing I've ever read about these characters were like... Was it two or three pages in the back of that best 2000 AD? Uh, but this is some early artwork by Alan Davis in there. That's crazy. So before Captain Britain and before, of course, Excalibur. The best of John Wagner's Judge Dredd right here. And another black and white anthology series this time around with some glossy paper stock. And there's some color pages. And we also have a Stronium Dog Search and Destroy. Then we're going to get to some superhero stuff, it looks like, here in a second. So, black and white collection and color stories in here as well. And I'm not sure if these are best stuff or not. Uh, so, this is really cool. This is Batman 1937, or 1937, 1939 to 2017. And there's two volumes of this, and it's the cover art. That's really cool in this oversized magazine type of dimensions. So there were some wicked covers coming out during this time. It's some very iconic. I love that Norm Brayfogle. Did they tell you? Let's see. Batman 451, 1990. Norm Brayfogle. That's right. Oh, hell. That's an Andy Cooper. So it looks like they're just... Are they doing these in order? No, they, I think they are. They're doing these in uh, chronological order. So... But if we're doing 1939, why didn't... Okay. We go, and then I assume this is the supplemental book, maybe? With more? Or is it the same? No, this is more. Maybe these are some of the ones that didn't make... No, it's the same book. Huh. It's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, this is the same book. It just doesn't have a dust jacket. That's, that is really pretty. So we've got a bunch of 2000 AD mags here. And we'll just look at a couple of them. Dude, this is so... Oh! What is this? Uh, didn't even see this in the pile. The Complete Ballad of Halo Jones. I assume... Holy crap, it is in black and white. Yeah, because I noticed that when I read the first... Um, the first book... I'm, I'm in the second story right now. Oh, no, I just finished the second story. I'm about to start the third story, so you'll see my overview soon. But the Ballad of Halo Jones that was just published in hardcover, the omnibus by... 2000 AD is published in color and I thought that the colors were kind of modern colors when I uh, saw it in the best of 2000 AD book so this is really freaking cool to have it in black and white this of course being Alan Moore uh it's a saga that he started that people were hoping one day he would come back and finish but he never did because the man just kind of blew up not physically like but like his fame blew up came over to america and they kidnapped him 
Uh, but yeah, this is really cool to see it in black. Because I read this stuff, yeah. This is really cool to see it in black and white in this beautiful big format. Uh, not that the Ballad of Halo Jones... And I'll do a comparison when doing that overview. But man, it would have been nice to have it in this big oversized format. That is awesome and so uh, surprising. Uh, and then, yes, there are some 2000 AD mags in here. Uh, collections in color, it looks like. Well, this one's kind of cool. It's got a die-cut cover! Okay, okay, that's it, that's it. Uh, the coolest thing, and no offense to everything that he sent me, with the exception of this, this is really cool. Um, the coolest things that I think he sent my way were these books. And that is Bruce Wayne Murderer, Volume 2, and Fugitive. These have never been in available... Here, let's look at Volume 1. These have never been in available in America in oversized hardcover format. This is the same size as, if you actually look here, these are the same size or as tall as an omnibus. We'll be looking at this one here in a little bit. But holy crap, this is so freaking cool. And and now, did I put it? I put it upside down. Of course I did. Uh, let's look at it underneath the dust jacket since I'm doing this. <laughs> now, I have to go and find Bruce Wayne Fugitive. And this is Murder Volume 1. So, Murder leads into Fugitive, and this is so cool to have in just a collection, I guess, of four books, because even the spines connect, like this. And, of course, I'm holding that the wrong way. Uh, but the spines connect. That spine from the Tencent Adventure, which kicks it off, and I believe it's this book right here. Is it not? No, wait, this is before... Oh, this is the new Gotham era. Holy crap. This has more than the collections we have here in America. Yeah, this is the era of new Gotham. It was when Greg Rucka was taking over Batman. You had Ed Brubaker writing Batman too. So it was right before both of the gentlemen went over to work on uh, Gotham Central. But this, I assume that this leads directly into the issue of the Batman Tencent adventure. See, so it looks like it's yeah, it's got some stuff from this era. I thought that was Officer Down for a little bit. This is mapped really interesting. And this is my first uh, time looking at this, by the way. That's really cool that they decided to put new Gotham stuff in there. Let's look at Bruce Wayne Murder Volume Two. And we'll just keep it in the dust jacket for now. And then we'll look at Fugitive. Now I've got to find Fugitive 1. What have you done to me, Super Laugh Hard? Guards, that's an awesome Ed McGinnis piece right there. I believe that's the retirement party, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, some of this stuff has not been printed in... Um, even in the trade paperbacks. So it's really cool to have this era. This really should have been called New Gotham, honestly. The way that they've it looks like this is printed. Because this is when Bruce Wayne Murder starts. At about a little over half of the second book. But this stuff here, this is all New Gotham, Officer Down. That is so cool. I had no idea these books existed. And it's only in English. Again, uh, published by... Eagle Moss over in uh, Europe. Right? I believe it's out of the UK. But yes, this begins the murder. Bruce Wayne's accused of being murder. I've done a Batman reading order of it. I really like that story, honestly. And that, of course, leads into Fugitive, which has its own two-volume collection where the... Bat family doesn't trust Bruce Wayne anymore. They're like, how could you lie to us? How could you have done this? And of course, it gives us the real full introduction, even though she was introduced in the pages of No Man's Land, of Cassandra Kane. It kind of goes deeper into her background and origin. So now, I gotta look for volume one. No, oh, seriously, thank you, man. This was cool. Another one of my viewers, this is awesome, El País del Oro Negro. These are Tintin stories in their original size, but it, uh, these came from a library because uh, he works at a library. I'm not going to say which one, but I think these were for sale. Uh, so you got me the anatomy for fantasy artists. This is so freaking cool. 
I remember when I I got so many of these books when I wanted to become an artist. So many of these uh, books. And it's really cool. So it's like, you know, if, if you're interested in drawing, it's, it shows muscles and extensions of your fingers and stuff like that. But it's for fantasy specifically. But these books right here, and somebody please help me with the pronunciation of his name. Is it Urge? Urge? Or Hergy, please. Uh, and that is Tintin, but it's all in Spanish. But it looks like, uh, when I was looking at this one and in this one, it looks like it was somebody studying Spanish because of the highlights. But pretty cool to have these because I have them in soft cover in a box set. I actually have all these. Uh, so these are nice. I'm going to actually give my daughters these so they can read them in Spanish because I think that's awesome. I've also done an overview of Who's Who Omnibus Volume 2 and Volume 1 if you want to go back to the channel. This just adds a lot of Legion of Superhero stuff in here, especially towards this beginning. So if you love the Legion and if you want an updated handbook of DC characters, this is the one to get for sure. Now, my buddy Kyle sent me two books that he knew I wanted and for some reason I forgot about. One of them being Enigma. This is from Dark Horse Comics. This is the latest printing of this book. It was a Vertigo book, and I believe it's a Burger book now. Awesome. Karen Burger, man. But this was at one time printed over at Vertigo. Uh, there's an introduction here from Peter Milligan in 2021. And I think the book actually came out in 2022, and you can see here that these were the Vertigo covers. And... No dust jacket, it's just art on board, and the book retails for $24.99. It is a standard size hardcover, though. But Duncan Fregredo's artwork is what really stood out to me uh, when reading these. And I'll be honest, I, I remember having the single issues, but I don't think I got around to finish reading the series. And this is the definitive, oh, down here, the definitive edition. So th I believe they added more things to this including more artwork. I don't want to get to the end because I haven't... I don't, yeah, I don't think I finished reading or collecting these issues, rather. But this is Enigma from Dark Horse Comics now. And he also got me Dow H. Yes, this is... They actually published a deluxe edition of this. Uh, the premise behind this, this was a lot of fun. I believe this is during the New 52 era. But it's the character of Nelson right here who is this guy that's not a superhero, and at one time he accidentally calls, and or I'm sorry, he, rather, he dials H for hero. So he's able to turn into different heroes by dialing, oh my gosh, uh, H, sorry, it's been a long time since we've had phones like that. Uh, 4376, I think. But he's able to turn into different heroes, and he accidentally, he's trying to call the authorities in the first issue. He's being chased down, he's... You know, kind of a slob, he's unemployed, he's not your average hero, but when he's about to get mugged and beaten, he goes into an old alley where there's this forgotten payphone, I love that it's a forgotten payphone because they used to be everywhere, and he dials 4376 on accident, and out comes Boy Chimney, and fights these people that were picking on him. Now he's only allowed to stay as a superhero for a little while, and the story changes. If you've not read this, this is one of those hidden gems, hey, hey! Bringing that segment back in February. But it really is one of those hidden gems that nobody really was talking about during the era of the New 52. And I think it was right around the New 52 when this was coming out. And maybe that's why it's kind of forgotten. But that is Dial H, the deluxe edition. I ended up having to get this. This is Blue and Gold. It's Dan Jurgens. It's Ryan Sook. And it's Booster freaking Gold with Blue freaking Beetle all day, every day. Uh, this does not take place uh, around the JLI time, though. It, it is set in the post-rebirth. I don't even know what time zone or timeline we're in anymore. I don't know what it's called. Post-rebirth is what I will say. Are they time travel elements? Absolutely. Are they goofing around? Yes. Does it need to be an ongoing series? I would hope so. And yes, other Blue Beetles appeared. It's not just Ted reuniting with... Uh, his buddy Booster Gold. There's also Jaime in here too. So this was an unexpected series that I, you know, I'd been looking forward to. So I'm glad that I picked up the trade paperback. Is honestly, I kind of forgot about it until the trade was, or whenever I was doing the upcoming collected editions video. I remember the trade was there and I was like, oh, I gotta pick that up. 
So it was just nice to see it. I would love to have seen um, a little more of the JLI reunion in here, Justice League International. But there were still some nice Easter eggs in here. Now here's a book I picked up, but I have not had the time to read. And people were wondering if I was going to do an overview of it. So I may do an overview of it um, if I finish reading it in time. I'll give my Give myself a week, I'll put it on my to-read pile on top of it. Uh, but this is Volume 2 of Monstrous. And Monstrous, again, the, the the issue that I have, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong, I love the artwork in here. But the issue that I had with Monstrous was that it was so dialogue heavy. That it does take a while to read. Uh, mature concept, or mature themes in here. Like violence and sexual content. Eh, but not that much, but... Yeah, I don't even recognize some of those characters. But I think it just fools you into looking like a manga, so you expect kind of manga type of uh, reading when there's a lot more to it than that. This one doesn't look as dialogue heavy as Volume 1. I mean, I, I notice a few pages. I can't put too much to the back there. But it surprised me how long it took me to read the first volume. But yes, if I have time, I promise I will be reading this because I love Takeda's artwork in this. I think... She's a phenomenal artist. And of course, Marjorie Liu. This is a beautiful book. Next up is this book uh, from Dime Breed Collectors, actually. The Fantastic Four Omnibus Volume 1. Uh, Johnny saw my tour of my books and he saw that I had the original printing of the Fantastic Four. And, you know, that stuff doesn't bother me. I, with, with Spines, I lost that battle a long time ago with manga. But he thought, hey, I've got a new printing of it. And he sent it to me my way. So that was really nice because he wanted my spines to match. So this is, of course, the reprint of the Fantastic Four Omnibus Volume 1. My copy, I believe, is the second printing. The first printing, by the way, if you're not familiar with that printing, is the one with the red on white Marvel Omnibus. So this collects here Fantastic Four 1 through 30 and the very first annual. And I believe this one was print. I haven't even looked. It looks, yeah, this is the Donley printer. So that's the same printer that usually does the Silver Age books. Uh, they did the Fantastic Four volume to reprint. So this is just a reprint of that. It has the exact same content. No, I don't think they used the new files for it. I know the very first one that used uh, the latest scans were was the volume two. And I did an overview of that. Oh my goodness. I think in 2021 when that book came out. But, I, dude, thank you so much. This, this was unexpected and I, I really do appreciate that. Yay, now my spines can match. Because I know that does bother some people, right? Especially when they change the spines in the middle of the series. And the reason I said I gave up on that fight, that came from manga. Because you collect manga for 20, oh my goodness, it's been 30 years now. And the small Tonka Bonds, they will change the spine on the same series the viz dark horse they all did it so i just kind of got used to it and just to not admit the feat but just say you know as long as i have the stories collected that's all that matters uh but yes this is the latest printing of the fantastic four collecting the first appear oh my gosh the impossible man there's so many characters that appeared here this to me has always been the beginning of these marvel era of comics not just silver age comics because I know there's a big debate on what the beginning of the Silver Age comics, but Flash of Two Worlds, I think, is regarded as probably the beginning of the Silver Age. But to a lot of Marvel heads, this was the beginning of the Silver Age. To me, I think this is really the beginning of the Marvel Age. Without this, there's no Spider-Man, there's no Captain America's return, there is no Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, and Avengers, X-Men. Not without this, no Cosmic. No, there's so much in here that is great, but... That is Fantastic Four Omnibus Volume 1 reprint. And, of course, I did an overview already of Swamp Thing by Len Wein and Bernie Wrightson. Gushing all over those colors and restoration they did in this. It's a beautiful book. And, yes, if you want to check out the channel, click on the link above. Did I say check out the channel? I meant check out the video. Click on the link above. Uh, this is The Man Who Fell to Earth. And I had to get this right. David Bowie. So, it is based on the movie. And it's all about... An alien that uh, falls to Earth in the hopes of getting the water back to his planet. So he starts selling like patents uh, for technology to try to make deals on how to get the water and transport it back to his planet that is drying out. 
So it's a very interesting premise. I wonder if the book, I haven't finished reading it or I haven't actually started reading it. This is from Titan Comics. Um, I wonder if this will kind of go a different route than the movie did. But does it say, I think it does say there's an adapt, yeah, adaptation by Dan Waters. Def Promenick is the artist here. Maybe on the covers where it states, yeah, based on the Nicholas Rogue and David Bowie movie. So this is the man who fell to earth. It's a hardcover, art on board, no dust jacket. Last but certainly not least, big shout out to Justin. Um, I did my walkthrough at the end of last year. This is, by the way, Black Mirror, the absolute edition. This is one that's out of print. Uh, people saw it in my thumbnail on a Saturday live stream and they were asking, is it coming back to print? No, I bought this use from Justin, who gave me a good deal on it. Uh, he was selling stuff, and I was like, hey, I just did a tour of my books. I don't have that one. I would like to purchase it from you. So uh, we're both in a omnibus collecting uh, collector's group on Facebook. Uh, and from time to time, I still go in there maybe like once. Well, now it's kind of like once a month. But I'm glad I saw it, and it was just the day that my video... Oh, no, it was two days after my video released of uh, my my tour. So this, in case you don't know, is Black Mirror. Black Mirror is Scott Snyder's first work on Batman, like his first full run. This predates the New 52 era, though, when Batman was kind of eh, a soft reboot, but still a little bit of a reboot. So this is not collected in the Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo omnibus. That jumps right into the Court of Owls from the New 52. This is from his run on Detective Comics. And the other important thing to note, if you haven't read this era, is that this is Dick Grayson, Batman. This is during the time when Dick Grayson was wearing the cowl and he was going as Batman. As a matter of fact, there's Red Robin team up. Most of the artwork in here, this even though this is Francisco Francavilla, is provided by Jacques. And Jacques is one of those artists that's very hit and miss with me. Sometimes I have a hard time following his panel layouts. Uh, but for some reason in this story, it worked. Because I know people love The Losers. And for me, The Losers were just... It was an okay book. Don't get me Andy Diggle and Jacques worked on that story together. But for me, it was just an okay story. In this, I thought his art really stood out. I thought... It really complemented the story. So yes, this is all about Dick Grayson being Batman and a big mystery here. But this is Black Mirror. It is one of my, probably, I would say, top 25 favorite Batman stories. Um, but that's it. Let me do an overview of this if y'all want to see exactly what it is and check it out more. Or any of these books if you want me to do an overview of. And return to the uh, Case Files, Judge Dredd reading journey let me know in the comments but that as they say is that now you can purchase some of these books from our sponsors cheapgraphicnovels.com your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50 percent off cover price they have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service check out their bargain deals for up to 90 percent off cover price and don't forget that cgn also takes pre-orders that way you don't miss out on the hottest releases and they are currently running a special promotion for you minties if you're a first-time customer after receiving your order confirmation email reply back to that email and let them know near mint condition sent you their way they will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the u.s cheap graphic novels your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more and that was the last haul of 2022 Again, thank you so much to Super Laugh I really could have done an unboxing of all his stuff he sent. Uh, he's been waiting well over a year and a half to send it to me. He's been gathering a bunch of books together, but my goodness, there's just that's that's a lot of reading. That's that's a lot of books I was not expecting. So thank you so much. Uh, some of these I do have, so I may uh, put them with uh, some lots whenever we do giveaways. So of course, keep an eye out on the channel for that. And thank you all so much for watching, for watching the haul videos for years now. It's one of my favorite videos to do, and I know some of you all missed it whenever I skipped a month or two, but uh, I'm glad that it's back. So, any questions, leave them down below, comments down below, smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.